We're here at the site in Parlier, California. We're called the National Arid Land Plant Genetic Resources Unit. As part of the national germplasm system, we maintain collections of arid lands and industrial crops, one of which is Puntia. One of the important goals of our research program is to develop an innovative outreach and extension program to educate stakeholders on the importance of Opuntia and its uses, and also to promote the use of arid lands crops so in the long run, we can begin to save water in the arid and semi-arid regions of the western United States. We're getting a lot of interest into research in arid land crops as we're looking to develop crops that are more resilient to climate change. The goal is to not only just replace fossil fuels, but do it in a way that's not also displacing food crops at the same time. Climate change is going to affect agriculture all over the country in every different environment. So as we've seen recently, not just causing hotter, drier environments in some areas, but more severe weather swings. So designing crops to be more resilient and fitting less into a small specific niche is important, but also expanding into new environments that haven't been exploited for agriculture yet can be another tool that we can use. So this is a, an example of a plant that's infected with one of the most serious production barriers for a puntia. And this is a, a plant that is infected with a puntia stunting disease. In Mexico, it's called chatilla, and in California, it's called macho as a common name. And you can see that these plants are very small compared to a normal plant, and also the fruit are very small. One of the goals of this project is to investigate what is causing a puntia stunting disease. And what we're going to be doing in this project is taking samples from these infected plants and sequencing the, the RNA and DNA and looking for either a viral pathogen or a bacterial pathogen because we think that either one of those is the causative agent for macho. One of the issues with a puntia is because it is clonally propagated, one can easily transmit a disease like macho from one plant to another. So developing effective treatment mechanisms or pathways to try and prevent the spread of this disease is really an important outcome for the project. One of the other issues is understanding how this disease, whether it's a viral or a bacterial disease, actually spreads. And we don't really understand how it can move from one plant to another. Once we establish what the causative agent is, we want to be able to determine if we can transmit the disease. And also, how do we prevent or how do we recover plants which are affected with the disease can we rescue them by either a heat treatment or some other means to try and uh, recover healthy tissue from a diseased plant? Cactus is pretty resilient and low maintenance, but there are a few pests that will attack it. One of the insects that will attack cactus is called cochineal scale, and it's a small scale insect that actually produces a bright red natural dye. So originally when cactus was grown, by people in Central America and Mexico. It was also grown to farm the cochineal insects. But today, that's not what we're looking for, and so that needs to be controlled largely with pesticides. Also, cactus moth is a barrier to production in Mexico and is controlled. So an issue when we want to move production into the United States, especially for food use, is finding approved pesticides that are safe for human consumption and also safe for the bee population that pollinates the cactus. Part of the project investigating the biomass productivity is to get an initial weight of each of the pads. And so what we're doing here is weighing each pad before we plant it into the field. And then the undergraduate assistants are taking measurements of 
the height, the width, the diameter, and the thickness of each pad. And from those data, what we're going to be doing is developing a productivity model uh, that's going to allow us to simply take the measurements of each pad out in the field and once we have those measurements we can calculate what the estimated weight of each pad will be and from that we can estimate the overall biomass productivity of the crop. What are the conditions that are perfect for growing it? So we want to know what is the optimum fertilizer input and what nitrogen sources does it prefer? Uh, out here you can see the field where we're trying to do an irrigation treatment, figure out what is the optimal water, uh, and we want to know things like how does it respond to temperature, and when you put all of these different factors together, you can start modeling and figuring out which regions in the globe are the best for growing this crop species and where is it going to be successful. When you look at the entire process from cradle to grave, then you can figure out are the net CO2 emissions going to be more or less than some of the other energy sources and sources for food that we depend upon and is this a viable species and is it going to be more sustainable to grow this crop for food source and for possibly bioenergy source too. Thank you.